hi 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 welcome to Joyfido International now today I got something exciting to share with you and as always when I'm inspired and I come up with all these ideas in my head wondering what to do with it I come here and I share them with you because when I share it with you I also listen to myself and I and I take on the knowledge that I'm sharing with you my name is Joy Fido and welcome on board. Okay, so what do I stand for? I always ask myself that and I want to know why I do what I do. I stand for what I call KISS. And KISS means knowledge, information and skills. So everything I know, I like to share it with you. And there's so much information and knowledge out there in my head and skills in my hand that I I have no use for them if I don't share it. So the best way, whenever you have something that you have, it's in you, the best way to get value out of it is to share it with people. And amazingly, this is what this topic today is about. The topic is about wealth. So wealth is service for people that's what the title is wealth is service for people why am i so interested in wealth it's something that i've always somehow been drawn to why am i drawn to it um wealth does a lot for all of us i mean when you look at wealthy people you see how much they contribute to life we're talking about let's say you're, you're someone who naturally loves charity what you have you want to share with them you want to share with people who don't have let's say you're someone who naturally believes in a cause and suddenly you do have wealth you have enough to provide for yourself and enough to share you will contribute to that cause so wealth is something that we all need I mean there are people you hear saying things like oh um, money is the is the root of all evil and all those kind of topics but something somebody said to me one time was if if trying to gain wealth is such a bad thing now think about when you don't have anything at all think about poverty what value does poverty bring to anyone you know what they say that the, the minute you have you have so many friends when you don't have you don't have any friend Nobody wants to hang around you if you don't have anything to offer them. And so when we say wealth, yes, it might be good to have to the point of people out there, you know how they say, they say the 10% of the world have it all and the 90% don't have. Yes, it would be nice to have up to that 10%, be part of the 10%. But being in a position where you don't lack, where you have the things that you need, and then you are able to now share with other people who don't have and also encourage them to have. That becomes the kind of place I want to be. So it's one of those things that I keep searching for all the time. It's trying to understand what does it mean? How do you achieve it? How do you get to that point? What do you need to get to that point? So I ask that question to myself all the time. And whenever I have an inkling of an answer, I want to share it so an inkling of an answer I share it so we're trying to understand how do you create wealth how do you create wealth and then from reading our books which is something I do and searching and taking on courses and taking on trainings and attending workshops and events and all of that I'm slowly putting together pieces of what this is all about because you see what's so interesting is you're not going to get the answer answer in one spot you're not going to get the answer from one person so from all the little bits of research I've been doing and reading and listening to tapes and CDs and DVDs what's what's slowly coming together is wealth is service for people and I'm going to break all of that down to you so wealth is service for people and how does that break down? Um, the more people you interact with, the more wealth you're going to have. 
And when I say interact, remember I said service. What do you offer people? What do you give? So today I'm sitting here and I'm chatting with you about this. If this were to be a service I'm offering and I'm charging everybody to come and listen to me give a talk and so many people come into that workshop, that's money. So the more people you can touch, the more you're going to receive. Even the Bible says it. It says you have to give in order to receive. But what I'm beginning to find out is, especially in this modern day life that we live in, lots of people are not in that state of mind, in that frame of mind to say, let me start finding out what it is that actually bring wealth to people. Everybody wants what they are calling instant gratification. Or some people will call it the Instagram world we live in. Everybody wants answers right now. But that's not where we want to be. We want to be in a situation where we really understand what makes wealth, what creates it. So, it's okay to say you have a skill. Yes, I've had this skill of braiding and, 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 and um, weaving and extensions, which is where this is our home training pack that I always share with you. It's so much knowledge I put in here. And then I have that knowledge and it's sitting here with me. And let's say very few people bought it. I haven't achieved anything. Because if I want to gain something out of that, a lot of people should buy it. And so how does that work out? This is service. I have put a service in there and I said service for people. So this service I've created, I'm sharing it with people. And so what happens is when I give it to you, you give me something back for trying out this service that I've given you, for gaining this knowledge that you're going to get out of that, for picking up these skills that's going to come into your custody. Now, for you now, probably, if you were, if we have to talk about this, when you've taken that knowledge and you've given me something in return for that, you then gain the skill, and then you take that skill and you share it with your clients. You do their hair, and they give you money back. So this is how it goes from people to people. But of course, you could have said, let's stop there. Now we, now we have a skill now we're sharing with, with people, what else do we need to do? Isn't that enough? Now, if we wanted to go to the next level, which is where we're saying wealth. Wealth is a lot of money, you have so much more. Okay, so when you really go deeper into wealth, it's not just money, money that can afford anything you're looking for, maybe property, maybe whatever else, um, assets. You start thinking numbers. So what type of numbers would make you wealthy? And this is one of the things I've been reading in this particular book. It's called The Millionaire Fast Lane. It's so interesting what, the way this man says it. He did some calculation of numbers. So if you were selling something, let's say $100 and times 10,000 people. And then he did the same thing less number of people and the product itself cost a lot more they came down to the same amount of money both service gave the person but how did that become important for you to understand how many people have you touched with your skill and then the next thing he's looking at is time okay so we start dealing with let's say we came back to hair and each time you have to work with a client, you spend, say, a whole day, or you spend three hours, four hours. How many of those hours do you have to spare in order to have that amount of money from that one person or from X number of people? So this is what you really need to start thinking about. What type of service are you going to offer from reading this book? That will, that will multiply over time. And this is where today's lifestyle comes into play. 
today's lifestyle we're looking at scenarios where you deal with millions of people in an hour it could be you're sleeping and what you're selling is already selling it's selling but you are sleeping you've taken a trip to somewhere else in the world and what you're selling is still selling this is where we're talking online that's today so if what you want to deal with is something that is going to touch a lot of people in one go no time he's, he calls it scaling time you're not tying down your time as in when we stand and start working with somebody's hair then you're going to create wealth so do you see how this is making a bit of sense now so that's why when i come and share what i've heard and what i've read and what i've listened to with you i am learning as well because it's not enough for me to just take this knowledge and go to sleep and say wow i know what to do now when i speak it it makes more sense to me and i can deal with it so we're trying to deal with a lot of numbers offer a service that can attend to a lot of people provide solutions to their problems deal with whatever issues they were struggling with give quality service give quality product give quality time to a lot of people at one time or in one time whichever way you want to look at the time frame if you can do that and if you can find that product if you can find that service then you're slowly walking towards being wealthy but for me starting this journey chasing and chasing and chasing clearly coming from a very lowly beginning where we were a lot of us from my parents and of course my dad could not afford providing for that number of children. And for him, the biggest thing he wanted all of us to gain was education, which was amazing. Because once you have knowledge, education, you can start thinking. And that takes me to an another book that I was reading about is, or reading as well. The Science of Getting Rich. And one of the things he really brought out that that really stuck out in my head is we all have it in us all of us have it in us and what is that thing that we all have our mind our mind is where everything happens and i've taken time to understand this you see if for instance you're trying to let's let's be very simplistic when we're trying to design a hairstyle. Do you know you have to think about it first? You have to create that design in your head. And when it's all made sense in your head, then you're ready to put it into action. I know most times when my clients call me and they say, I want a hairstyle, and then they will quote a name, I say, okay, could you send me a picture of that hair? Because if that image hasn't been drawn in my mind, it becomes confusing when you're trying to do it. So every human being, you have been created with a mind. God created all of us with a mind. And it is in that mind that everything happens. So while we are sitting down there, I'm wondering, what else should I do? I have tried everything, nothing is making sense. The mind is where all the answers are. So while we are trying to understand our mind, the first thing I had to also take on board while chasing and understanding was who am I? Who am I? I listen to a lot of personal development talks and this happens to be one of my favorite areas. This is why I share a lot with you on this forum of personal development. It starts with knowing who you are. And I've taken my time to try and read, try and listen to, try and talk to people, try and attend workshops. But you see, it all comes down to this one book, the Bible. The Bible may, you know, the first, the, the, you know, the Old Testament, 
I've understood that part to mean historical events of what is real. So I like to call it living history. Because when you listen or when you read some of the stories and things that happen to people like when uh, um, Moses had to go and get the, the children of Israel from Egypt and then you hear the story of Moses and then you hear the story of Abraham and then you start wondering wow this happened and how God related with them. Then you have to think again. What about me? What am I doing? How is God relating to me? And when you then go into this, you know, the, the, the New Testament and you start hearing when Jesus was speaking to the disciples and his followers. And then you get to pick out the parables. And how God says, before you think of anything else, the first thing you have to think about is connect yourself with God. He keeps remind he kept reminding us of you're here to do God's will because he came to do God's will. And then we begin to understand, even going back to the old, old testament, where God God had to create everything from nothing. And then further down, same old testament, uh, uh Genesis he says, Go ye and multiply, and he's given you authority over all things. Then you start wondering. I remember when he said, I'm creating man in, in my image. Let's create man in our image. And then you know that the image of God is in you. And every one of us are a representation of God. Then you begin to put it all together. Because we need to accept the fact that God lives in all of us. That's why we're living and that's why we breathe. And if God created from nothing, then that part of us that is God can use our mind to create, to create amazing things. Hence, we put that image in our mind and bring it to reality. So, focus now is what do we want to start bringing from our mind? Hence, the science of getting rich reminds us that we all have it in us. When God said to us, go here and multiply, we all have it in us to go out there and create something. But you see, something interesting that, hap that I listened to recently, this, this um, CD set, and this particular one from El Nightingale, they, they do have um, a company called the Nightingale Conant and what they do is they have lots of <coughs> lots of personal development experts who come there and give their talks on various topics and one of the ones I was listening to he told a story that was really touching and you know mind blowing he told this story where he said this person um, had a farm and this was in Africa he had a farm that contain uh, diamonds and this is real why because africa happened to be where i come from we have so much natural resources so much that is so mind-blowing so this particular farmer had a farm full of diamonds but you know what was funny he heard a story about diamonds and he thought, oh yeah, let me go look for diamonds. And so he sold his farm. Remember, he had lots of diamonds in it, which were like all over the place. He sold the farm for peanuts. And he went around looking for this farm of diamonds. So he was going from place to place, looking and looking and looking, and he never found no farm diamonds and in the end he threw himself in the sea and died the person he sold the, the, the farm to now was walking around in the, in the farm one day and picked this chunk of diamond but of course diamond in its raw state 
it's not in such a way that you know it's diamond. Okay, he had a little bit of a shiny bit of a glitter of it. And so he just picked it and put it on, on you know, in his living room. Just put it there. I never gave it a second glance. And then somebody comes to visit him one day and says, what is that thing on your table? He said, well, I just picked it from the farm and I just put it there. Um, I don't know what it is. So the man picked it up and looked at it and saw the reflection and saw the glittery feel about it. And the man said to him, this is diamond. Where did you get it from? Oh, I just picked it from the farm. Let's go and see. And they went. And it turned out to be the largest farm of diamond in all of Africa. This is the story he told. I don't know where he got the source from. And the moral of the story was because the original owner of the farm did not know what diamond looked like. So he saw this farm and went around looking for a diamond farm. But remember, he didn't know what it looked like. So thinking about it now, how would he have known what a diamond farm looked like anyway, even if he came across it? But then clearly he had saw this farm that was full of diamond because he didn't know what diamond looked like. And of course, the person who, who, who equally bought it did not know what diamond looks like. And so he too, well, happily, he just sat there because he's just bought a piece of land and that was it. Then this person who came and showed him this is diamond became the one who opened his eyes. But see, that's where we all are. That's where most of us are, including myself. Because we have things in us that are amazing. We all have things in us that are amazing. And I can tell you that for sure because I offer the service of braiding. I train people in braiding. And then clearly my message is not good enough, I would think. Because what I, I feel I could share my knowledge to empower people. But the number of people who are interested are not there. Why? Because they haven't seen that diamond. Or they don't understand what diamond is. And then you go to hairdressing schools, which I also did, and I remember having a big fight with them. It's full of students learning how to blow dry hair, color hair. Anything but creative skills. So this is where the issue is. So if you have these creative fingers and you can do so much with your fingers, you know what happens? You don't appreciate it. You don't, you don't value it because somebody hasn't gone shining it for you as they have to go and shine that diamond for this person to appreciate the fact that he had diamond in his farmland. So we need to look into ourselves and the message was so big for me again because this is us in Africa. We have so much. We have so much. A good simple example is shea butter. Whenever I visit Nigeria, the amount of shea butter you buy for ridiculous money. And then you come over here to the West and you see every shiny package container. And then they tell you with, with shea butter. And when you take that cream and rub on you, you can just tell that the amount of shea butter, if any, is minimal. And when you even look at fruits, like fruits are all over, they're dropping down way back in Nigeria, where I come from. Let's say it's mango season, mango is everywhere, all over the floor. But you come here and when you see a, a, a bottle of juice with mango in it, they will say, made with concentrates. But yeah, that's mango all over the ground in Africa. And we don't know what to do with it. And then we are then crossing the sea and being thrown out overboard all the time because we're chasing this diamond that's already been shined and is glittery being Western world. The straight roads, the water flowing in the top, 
uh, the light 24 7 even when they cost your life practically because you have to walk 24 7 in order to afford them we all want that diamond that's already been caught and shined but the diamond that's in our farm that we have no clue what it looks like is sitting on there waiting for us and that's what the science of getting rich tells us we all have it in us it's for us to sit down and start thinking how we can turn what we have into this diamond that other people will appreciate as well and so the bigger message for me was what can we do that will, will help other people's lives that they'll be willing to part what they have in order for you to also get rich so you're enriching people's lives and they enrich you back and you know you know what's so funny about some of this you speak to a typical a typical us africans or typical us black people we will always come with i can't find anything to do i can't find it this was an interesting one because i was chatting with my young son this morning and then he wakes up and for him it's just his phone and his game that's all he wants to spend his time on and i i, I try to pull him into getting involved in things happening in the house and i said the dishes are in the sink could you go wash them and he goes i didn't see them you didn't see them how about i didn't look for them or i didn't even go near the kitchen to see if there was plates in the sink because that's the reality with all of us we don't look we don't even look i mean the bible clearly says to us seek and you shall find and you see all these books that i i come and read here and show them to you and i tell you the things i've found out in this the books are there I, 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 you know, I write something which we all know. If you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book. And it's true. The knowledge is out there, especially now with the technology we have. One of the courses I was doing, or, or one of the models in the course I'm doing, uh, 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 Travel and Tourism, called Developing Manager. The knowledge is there. For any business to grow, the people in that business have to grow. For any country to grow, the people in that country, they have to grow. One of the first resources any country can, can, can lay claim to is human. Because now, like we've just said, in Africa we have all the crude oil, we have all the uh, gold, 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 uh, um, uh, uh, gold all over the place, diamond all, all over the place, amazing stones all over the place. For as long as we don't have that knowledge of knowing what to do with them, of what use are they to us? Of what use are they to us? We don't even know where they are. I mean, all, all the fruit trees in Africa, we don't know what to do with them. They're just sitting out there and staring at us and, and all we probably do with it, we just get it and we chew it and we chuck it away. But you come here and you see, see how people with knowledge have used the same thing or similar and i'll call it similar because i've done all types of training i did a training in how to pro, you know prepare hair creams and things like that and these are all synthetic things they create this sense in the lab and so when they create these things and then they'll tell you with whatever it is with shea butter with argan oil these are all synthetics they're not the real thing so for us to develop as a people, we need to start developing our mind first. We need to be willing to seek knowledge. We need to be ready to find out where solutions are. We need to ask the right questions in order to have the right answers to them. Because that's the same thing with internet. You cannot just go on the internet and say, oh yeah, um, I know exactly what I'm looking for and then you type in the wrong thing. Trust me, from taking the course I've been taking, now I am even more aware how to search for knowledge. Because if you type the wrong thing in, the wrong, the wrong answer will come to you. And that's when you hear people say, garbage in, garbage out. 
how have you prepared your mind such that is willing to take on knowledge so that when he sees knowledge he knows that this is knowledge so that when you when that man saw the diamond he knew that that was diamond because he was prepared for it but if you're not prepared if you're not aware you know what they say ignorance is bliss that's the problem we're struggling with we are waiting for that diamond to, to have been shined first before we can say, oh, look, that's actually diamond. Same thing with the knowledge we have. Same thing with the skills we have. Same thing with the services that our people need. I'm constantly wondering, 200 million people in Nigeria, how do we service them? What do they want? What can we give to them that will make sense, that will enrich their own life? And you know, when I look at people who have made sense in business world, people like Richard Branson, you read his history, you hear how he started. People like Oprah Winfrey, you read about how you hear how she started and how she's contributing to people's lives. Anthony Robbins, you hear how he started and what he's doing to help other people. And so we read up on all these people but we don't think we, we have any part to play in life. So, mainly wealth is you realizing that the more people you touch, the more service you give to people that enrich their life, that support their life, the more they are going to give you back. So, it comes down to giving and taking. I know I've talked about this a few times, but it all makes a, a lot more sense right now. Because if you don't give, how are you going to receive anything? If you have nothing to give anybody, how are you going to receive anything? In the in you know yes, back back when they had what they called trade by butter, and so if you didn't have any skill, you were practically dead, because no one was going to give you anything. Okay, so today we have money. And then you have the corrupt type of money where, especially in Africa, again, I always come back, governments there don't care about the people. They're not willing to support the people in any form. And so their idea of, of ruling a country is just to take away the wealth. Wealth that could have been reused, used to create infrastructure, used to create the, what they call enabling environment, used to grow the people you were talking about developing people's mindset well that could have been used to do that in order to have these same people that will now see the diamond and know that this diamond is in its raw state in order to develop people that will now say now that i've seen this diamond how do i make it become what people can buy no we have a system that governments are not interested in growing the people and so all they sit down there and do is wait until strangers who know what this diamond is will come and take away the diamond and go and mine it somewhere else and then come and sell it back to us at ridiculous prices. Because we cannot develop our own mind in order to be able to appreciate what diamond looks like, what oil looks like, what gold looks like what special stones look like but coming back to where we are talking about wealth and service for people the sooner me and you start thinking what can we do that we can give to people that can improve their life and then they will appreciate it and give something back to us the better for all of us. Because clearly, if we have not come to that point where we realize that wealth is service for people, it looks like we're gonna keep chasing and chasing and chasing. We're gonna keep chasing. And I, and I want us to start from somewhere. Let's start from somewhere. Like in the case of me sharing skill of braiding and weaving and, and designing wigs, which we've been doing. You pick up skills like this to start sharing with people and then they start giving you something back. 
But of course, as you're growing in that line, you're thinking more. Because the thing with being human is growth. That's what being human is about. And that's why God gave us this number of years to last here. So we can add more and more to life. It's not about, oh yeah, I can braid hair, oh my gosh, that's the end of the road for me. For the rest of my life, I'm going to be braiding hair till I die. No. No, you are a thinking human being. You got that thing in your, in your mind, in your life called your mind that can create from nothing, being the part of God in you. You can create so much more. You can create so much more. And that's what you see on this channel. We throw so many more things at you. I can sit down here and start creating amazing food for you. I can sit down here and mix different types of fruits and create you a, a beautiful, lovely juice. I can sit here and, and design a hairstyle for you. And stitch a wig for you. And come and chat with you to empower your mindset, your way of thinking. So, this is all my various ways of contributing to your life. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to open up your mindset to welcome as many ideas as possible. So that you can give out to life as much as you are expecting from life. But one of the biggest things I really wish I can, I can help my people, black people, African people start thinking is, you don't have to depend on other people for your survival. You already have it in you. You already have it in you. All the various skills we've talked about, each time I visit Nigeria and I see so much skills around that people are not taking as anything, it hurts. It really hurts. It's just the same way if I'm offering braiding training here or I'm offering braiding service here and people look at it and think, oh yeah, but it's nothing. And then they see hair coloring and they get excited. Why do you decide that this one is useless and that one is amazing? How do you come about that? It has some feeling of the, the, the grass is greener in the other, in the, in the other compound. And you forget that for it to look green from here, somebody did something to it. We need to start appreciating what we have. Because when we appreciate what we have, when we appreciate the skills that we possess, it's like tying the African rappers, dressing in African fashion, all of those things excite me. But you still see, I know so many African people who will never be seen dead in African outfits. And then you're wondering, how do you want your fellow Africans to grow? If the things that are local to us, that are natural to us, you find them irritating or disgusting. So when you're spending your money, it's, it's just the same thing as dealing with brands, which is one of the biggest things I, I, I struggle with. You find a brand so amazing and you spend any amount of money on that brand. But you forget that a human being created that brand. So how about you also creating your brand and let other people buy yours? And one of, one of the things I was reading in another book is, I think this particular book was talking about being on the, on the this one, the fast lane millionaire being on the production side instead of the consumption side because there's so many of us who all we want to do is just consume you wake up in the morning and all you're thinking what can i buy today oh did you see the latest shoe that's just come out did you see the latest dress that's just come out did you did you see the latest perfume that that company has created did you see the latest hat the latest you know just you want to spend whatever little money you have on the latest but you're not thinking how about I invest that money into something that will help me also create letters for other people we're talking about growth here 
because the mindset that most of us have is to just be employed by somebody and you're not thinking that person that employed you is a human being too how about you thinking the line of I want to employ somebody too I want to be an employer because there was that story I actually have that magazine but somehow I forgot it young Kylie Jenner Kim Kardashian's younger sister she's barely 20 years old or maybe 21 I don't even know exactly how old she is she's a billionaire and what helped her to get there it's the same social media you and I go and watch every day we look at it every day okay you hear the people who are arguing oh yeah she came from a well-to-do home she's always been in the in the face of the public so what else is new but then don't forget that she has other sisters she has a brother and not all of them became as rich as she became why because of mindset the same thing we're talking about mindset she capitalized on the on what she already had which was the audience if you go on her instagram you get lots of you find the number of views that she gets she throws out something within seconds three million people are viewing it you go on her twitter account you see the number of people who follow her there so she throws out anything millions of people are seeing it she saw an opportunity and she used it oh okay what if i throw out a foundation and tell them look that's the foundation i used let's see what happens millions we are buying it it went out of stock in seconds oh what if i throw out a lashes and i tell them this is the lashes i used everyone was buying it millions of people were buying it went out of stock social media the same that you and i have but why was why was it so exciting that we almost buy what Kylie Jenner had put out? Because as usual, that's a diamond that's already been cleaned up. So we all want to be like that. Oh, that's an amazing diamond. But the same eyelashes, somebody else will throw it at you. Maybe your typical fellow black person will throw it at you and you don't want to see it. Kim Kardashian wears uh, um, cornrows and everybody gets excited. I always put it up. I put it up on my Instagram page so that, oh, will that give you an opportunity to come and see my page? Because when I put um, a regular braiding hairstyle on that page, two people want to look at it. But the minute I put Kim Kardashian there, everybody want to come and talk. Oh, I don't know why she's trying so hard to be black. I don't know why she's wearing cornrows. I don't know she, uh, uh, cultural appropriation. Why she... But why? Why? The same culture that you and I have, we have no regard for it, and somebody else wears it, and you get angry. Why? That's the problem we have as black people. We need to come out of that mindset. I'm talking about that. There's a book that was that that I read that that really touched me to explain that to me. Psycho cybernetics. Psycho cybernetics. And when I, I I haven't finished reading this book, but one of the easiest things this man talked about is for us to understand that image, the physical image that we have, has a lot to do with the way we carry ourselves with the way our mind works and they did a research or a study where um uh, 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 i think not the makeup artists all these people who sit down and talk and talk you know pull and drag and you know completely change change the way a person looks these people did their research and found that the minute you know cosmetic surgery the minute they finished with the cosmetic surgery and created this new image of this person the person's character changed so what we see in the mirror contributes to how we think and the reason i was curious about that which i get to know about some books from another book the person said all of us are the same 
because my concern was why is it that we black people struggle to come out of this mental mental men men i don't know how to describe it there's, there's a movie i watch called get out you can check that movie out for me i get messages from everywhere i watched that movie and it was shocking and it was, it was about this black boy who who followed his white girlfriend to to their parents house and they're having a party and somehow they decided to use him and he was being sold he was being auctioned and suddenly um the man who bought him had decided what to do with him his eyes was what he wanted to use so they will go and uh, um, in surgery they will not take his eyes take take his eyes no take that man's brain and put in his brain and remove his brain and then he will become the man but with the eyes he will use his eyes to see for that man you know watch the movie and how were they able to get him in that position they had to put him in a trance and the mother put him in a trance and what he, what she said was you have been put in a sunken place in a sunken place and that just reverberates in my brain is that how black people feel now we've been put in a sunken place that we cannot get out again and while the title was get out the the few black people he came across were just trying to tell him to get out quicker the sooner he gets out the better because something bad is going to happen but of course he went through the whole process and you know how movies are in the end he won and he survived i won't say won he survived and got out but what is wrong with us and i needed to find out and this book was one of the books that tried to explain that to me that we need to understand that we are all the same it just comes down to the image that you allow to sit in your face when you look in the mirror are you appreciative of that image do you think that image is okay for you are you happy to be you know do, do you stand tall and proud to say that image is doing a good job for you to now carry on your role as a person because if that is not the case what is the matter with us what is the matter with us because our mental understanding of what life is is meant to be the same across board it does not matter what color what race what ethnicity or or what what age in some cases because there was this story I, I can't i can't remember his name but this guy if you go on youtube and just type in no hand no leg person this man is one of the richest people around because he equally gives personal development talks he has no hand and no leg and all he uses is his mind though there's another movie i just finished watching called the infinity war it's about all this side you know um this, this imagination world where is what i love those movies infinity war and infinity war one area that really touched me got me a message as well is this guy he was he was the one who was creating the the, the arms they were using and he was so good at creating it that whatever he created was unique so this the main star in the movie called thanos thanos comes and says to him create me arms that i will use in defeating all of the superheroes and so i think it was about him either he created the, the uh, um, ammunition or thanos was going to kill all his relatives and everybody where he was, he, he came from and so he said okay i'll create it so he created the ammunition for him but still thanos went ahead and killed all his people so thanos obviously lied but thanos knowing that he was so amazing with his hands i could create any ammunition thanos then chained his hands chained it and said these hands are just for me because only only i can make you um create ammunition for me i don't want you to create ammunition for anybody else again clearly knowing that if he's such an amazing person at creating arms and he lives in my life somebody else might come and he will create arms for that person and maybe that person will be able to defeat him so he did that 
And so after Thanos had gone, oh, going around the world, killing and destroying everywhere in the universe, Thor, which is another superhero, came and clearly knowing this man who also creates this ammunition, came to him and said, I want you to create me ammunition that I can use in defeating Thanos because Thanos had come to Thor's land and killed Th uh, Thor's brother and everybody and Thor's best friend. So Thor now is in revenge mode. I want to kill Thanos. So, and the guy says to him, I can't create you anything anymore because Thanos has tied my hands. And you know what Thor said to him? He said, no. When you created those ammunitions, it wasn't just your hand that created it. You created them from your mind. You created them from your mind. So go into your mind and start dreaming what type of ammunition you can create for me. It's not your hands. And that was another huge message for me. Because I was like, oh my goodness. This message comes to me from everywhere. It's not about your hands. It's not about your color. It's not about your height. It's not about your size. It's not about any of those physical things that psychosybernetics is talking about. Because we put this picture in our head, this image in our head, and so we allow that image to dictate who we are. And I keep saying to people, don't live from the outside because most of us live from outside in. The real person that makes who you are, which is your soul, your spirit, your, 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 your emotions, whoever you are, it's in your mind. And so the minute you release your mind to think, the world will be an easier place to handle. You can dream up things and put them out there. And stop living in this imagery world. Yes, we love doing things sometimes. Okay, so I love wearing wigs. I love wearing colorful wigs. I love wearing, you know, I love that. That doesn't mean that's who I am. That's the image I present out there. And so what these various places and books are telling us, like the case of the man with a hand and leg is, if your mind is set and knows what to do it does not matter what the physical attributes are it does not matter it is you going into your mind and creating amazing things from there that was exactly what god did for us when he was creating the first day he created god said and god said that's what the bible says and god said let there be light god did not say ah let me use my hand and throw some magic and boom and there's light. No. And God said. So you see, that comes from the mind. So you can decide, I want to be able to create amazing hairstyles for my clients. Like one of the new things we're doing now, we're, we're dreaming of using various colors to design various hairstyles. That's, a, that's an idea that's just hit my mind and I'm deciding... And then my hand is doing it. So if my mind did not think about it, my hand would not know what to do. So everything that we are starts from the mind. And so the minute we can start thinking and developing and growing, we can change the world. We can make the world a better place. We will not be sitting in that mindset where we think only the West is a better place. Only that shiny diamond is a better diamond only that skill that that person has is the better one because all of us have something in us there's something in every one of us all you have to do is appreciate the one you have appreciate it and let it shine and and grow it and start from day one do you start thinking oh my gosh it's going to be perfect before i can do it no this is where lots of people get lost again. But, but I have to make it right first. There has to be a one day, day one. Don't worry about the rest, just start. And that's what I've been doing with you with my personal development knowledge because I love it so much. I am chatting with you daily today. I don't know how far I'm gonna take this, but, but I know it's something I'm really gonna take as far as 
because there's a passage in the Bible that really touches me. It says, the harvest is many, but the workers are few. That touches me. A billion people in Africa, and we're still so lost. And they still look at us and they say, the dark continent, that touches me. That tells me clearly what the Bible is saying. Harvest is many. So many people are there, but the workers are few. People to make you realize that you are not as ignorant as, as they've been made, you've been made to think. Took me a long time to get here. I know from childhood, one of the things my dad put in me was, nobody's better than you, and that's talk. But it still took me a long time to accept and understand racism living in the West. To understand how if you are working with somebody from another race, you could be picked out as one who, who doesn't know anything. Took me a long time to understand that my accent is a problem for lots of people. Or you don't speak the way we speak. And who cares? You don't speak the way I speak. You don't speak my accent. You don't speak my language. So why should I care if I cannot speak your language with the accent you speak? So these are things it took me a long time to understand. And now that I understand it, I am happy to share it. I'm happy to share my experience of living in the West, of getting to work with people who may not appreciate you as a person. But you need to appreciate yourself. And that's where we are. And that's why getting to know that wealth is the service you give to other people, it's so important. Because you're not going to overnight, which is what we are, where I'm saying, the instant gratification. You're not going to overnight just because you saw people who are, cor who are corrupt and became rich overnight, you want to be like them. It's a problem we have in Nigeria. Every young child wants to be a politician and people are being killed unnecessarily for no reason. My brother-in-law died just like that because of some type of people. Kids who think that the answer is to kill for something they didn't work for. But all you have to do is accept who you are and bring out that unique thing that God gave you to share with the world. So I'm, I'm going to close it here and, um, and hope that I've been able to share this message with you and, that, and hope that it's touched you somewhere and hope that you, you're going to be able to you know, pick up great things from the message I've shared and work with it and, and realize that the most important thing we need to start thinking to start with is what type of service how can you touch people's lives and and give them value and and solve a problem and and be of use to them and enrich their lives so if i'm sharing the skill of hair i'm hoping that when you know what to do with your hands and the and these creative skills, you're gonna offer it to people and they will pay you. So that's how I'm enriching your life. And so, anything that you can do, there's so many things out there. Start doing them, don't wait anymore. Just start today, start making that change in your life. 2019 coming up, this is one of the biggest messages I can share. I know there's so much more that I have to share, but this is one of them. Wealth is service for people. So when you think of something that can touch people, and then the next question becomes, how many people can I touch? And in what time frame can I touch them? Because if people are coming in and you're doing that hair, it's taking the whole day, that's the whole day. And that's the amount of money they pay you for that whole day. But if you could offer something that touch thousands of people in one day, that's how you get wealthy. But like I said, we start from somewhere. So I've been doing sharing skill of hair with you now for the past 16, 17 years. So now when I took it to the next level of giving you knowledge in a package, it makes more sense because I'm coming across from my experience. 
So if you are starting today, yes, start today. Start working with people in any field. Start today and start growing your experience. And when your experience is grown enough and you are happy with it, then you package them. And that's when you now start touching more lives in one go. So I hope this has made sense. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you and God bless you.